Welcome back to The Breakfast. Our next conversation is on banditry and kidnapping. And, of course, uh, conversations with regards to prosecuting major sponsors of uh, terrorism and insecurity in Nigeria. The Nigerian government a few days ago had made statements, uh, of course, saying that they were aware of certain people who were sponsoring insurgency and sponsoring the level of insecurity in the country. And Nigerians have clamored that those names be released and those persons be prosecuted. We are speaking this morning with the former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Obadiah Melafia. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great nation, good people. Absolutely. Thanks for having me again. Okay. It's not the first time. I'm, I'm guessing you might agree. It's not the first time that we've heard uh, statements like this from the Nigerian government saying they are aware of certain people who are sponsoring terrorism. Not long ago also, there were certain names that were released by, I think, the United Arab Emirates of Nigerians or persons in, in the UAE that were sponsoring terrorism and Nigerians also. But we still haven't gotten to hear of those persons. So does this you know, statement by the Nigerian government excite you in any way? Not at all. Uh, for one thing, I can only say to them, welcome to the real world. I mean, they've been in a deathly slumber uh, for more than five years. They've been in denial for more than five years. Um, you know, whenever you have terror prison, whenever you have such large-scale violence, it goes without saying that somebody somewhere must be sponsoring them. And those who understand these things, you know, from the viewpoint of uh, the money flow, you can trace, you can trace how these things work. Uh, you know, you can trace it through the financial system. Uh, sometimes they use fronts, sometimes they use NGOs, uh, they use religious organizations. Uh, so the pattern and means of channeling funds are fairly well known to the intelligence services all over the world. So if we put our mind to it, we can always find out who are behind. And in any case, when you catch some of these people, uh, you should be able to find a way of building a meticulous understanding of the networks leading up to the capo di capi, uh, to use the language of the Italians, the big bosses behind the bosses. So, uh, so I, I can only tell them, welcome to the real world. Uh, at last, they've, they've woken up. At least, uh, that's a good sign. Uh, that they are serious-minded people. Uh, because any serious-minded government would want to find out those behind the little boys that you see carrying AK-47. They are you... the real leaders. The real leaders are behind them. Mr. Melafia, would you say the Nigerian government is complicit um, by not being able to, in the last couple of years, point you know, fingers, name certain people that are maybe responsible for all of this and have been sponsoring, you know, and, or, or would it be reasonable to say that the government really has not been able to find out anyone because they're, you know, they're maybe using, you know, money-making um, routes that are impossible for the government to know? I don't think so. I mean, any government that claims it is impossible to know has no business calling itself a government. Uh, they should move on and let those who know how to run a country, run a country properly. But once you are there, and once you are commander-in-chief, the buck stops with you. You must make tough decisions. You must be prepared even to bite the bullet. That's what real leadership is. It's not about complaining. It's not about passing the buck. It's about making decisions here and now. I wouldn't use the word complicit uh, because conspiracy theories by their very nature are difficult uh, to prove. And uh, in any case, for, for, for personal reasons, I wouldn't want to go into that. I mean, I've gone through that before. 
through my own baptism of fire and they tried to ridicule my testimony in the media, uh, including Daily Trust and those fascists that run Daily Trust. Uh, you know, they tried to run down my, my, my testimony uh, and, and behaved like allegedly fascists, you know. Uh, so, uh, uh, but some of us know what we know. And we know that this thing is not an isolated thing, that there is a pattern to it, there is a program, and there is a political agenda of conquest and hegemony and subjugation and humiliation. And those who call themselves our leaders have a constitutional as well as legal duty to go to the bottom of this, to bring out the ringleaders and the sponsors and to prosecute them. Otherwise, both they and the terrorists have blood in their hands. Mr. Melafia, <laughs> last week, Thursday, April 1st, presidential spokesman Gaba Shehu said that sponsors of Boko Haram insurgents and bandits include some bureau exchange operators with contacts abroad. He says, and I quote, a lot of people have been arrested in terms of financing terrorism. There are a number of people who are currently under arrest. And by the time we conclude our investigation, the shocking details will surprise many Nigerians. But Mr. Melafia, this is not the first time we're hearing statements like this from the government. As far back as 2012, we heard a statement just like this one, where the FG said that they have a list comprising of names of suspected backers of the Islamic sect Boko Haram, that the federal government has prepared this list and that it will reveal this list in due course. Many years later, no such list exists. And we're hearing such statements again from the presidency. Lots of Nigerians think, you know, the government is just playing on their intelligence. Or how else do you justify this promise and fail? Well, you wouldn't blame the Nigerians for feeling that people are playing on their intelligence because we've heard these things before. We've heard this kind of nonsense before, and then nothing comes out of it. Uh, uh, you know, I think they know. I think they know from day one. Uh, but don't forget that Buhari himself, before he came into power, warned good Lord Jonathan that an attack on, on Boko Haram is an attack on the North. Didn't he say that? You all heard him. So why, why are you surprised that they, 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 they maintain this kind of conspiratorial uh, inaction with regard to genocide, with regard to the killing uh, of, of innocent and defenseless people? Some of us are not coming from a political angle, we are coming from a moral and theological angle. That the killing of innocent children, uh, raping of women, you know, beheading of clergy, that it is a moral evil. And those who do that are bringing a curse on themselves and a curse on the land. We reject it in every material particular, we will fight it to the very end. We will expose these wicked people and they will be ashamed of themselves. That is the truth of the matter. So I don't care what they say anymore. It's not important. Okay, Mr. Until Mr. I, see you I, I think the first big question should be, does the federal government really know the sponsors of terrorism in Nigeria? I think you will have to ask them that question. But I, I think they do. I, I think they really do. I mean, you, if you have a vast intelligence network, uh, you have police CID uh, department, you have DSS, you have NIA, you have DIA. I mean, uh, you, you can't, wh what are they being paid for? You know, what, what are they being paid for if, if they can't find out the people behind them? I, I think implicitly, People do know, uh, but uh, they are not willing to say, uh, uh, and they don't want to say. Uh, and then, you know, that's the thing. And of course, there are people who believe that the whole thing, you know, Obasanjo called it a project of fullanization, that they are allowing this thing 
so that, you know, they can conquer the rest of Nigeria and make the, the rest of us Nigerians a conquered people, a subjugated people. Uh, and, uh, and by the way, they don't believe in economic development because when you have economic development, uh, you create a middle class that are prosperous and have a vested interest in stability. They don't have a vested interest in stability. They want everybody to be crawling on their foes and saying Ranka Dede for the crumbs to fall into their hands. God forbid. This is what they want. Uh, they want to turn into a, a country into a beggarly country so that they can conquer and dominate using all the paraphernalia of the state, using all the apparatus of force that the state has and all the money that the state has uh, uh, to conquer and subjugate people. Uh, we must call their bluff because this is Satan's work. This is not God's work. Well, if, if, that, is, if well, that is true from your analysis, then how does it work beyond 2023 if the current administration is no longer in power? Um, if that narrative, you know, that you've just uh, pointed out is true, how does it work beyond when they are no longer in power, when some of these persons are no longer holding those positions uh, with which they've allowed, according to your narrative, with which they've allowed, you know, some of these crimes to go unhindered? Well, my dear young man, uh, I don't know on whose side you are. You cannot say if what you say is true. I mean, you can't even ask that question. What have I said that is not true? Are they not killing people? No, I'm referring to... No, no, I'm referring are, are to the... Not, uh, wait, uh, wait, wait. Are they not raping women? Absolutely. Are they not kidnapping Scotsmen? So what is it about what I've said that if it no. is true? Um, hold on, Mr. Is, Mr. Melafia. I am referring to the Fulanization ideology. I'm, I'm not talking about the murder and the rape and the killings. I, I, of course, oh, everyone knows those are true. I'm referring to the if ideology no, about Fulanization. Me, yes, go ahead. I don't know which state you come from, but I suspect you come from one of the forest, forest states. Um, uh, Edo State, actually. If, there, if there's no fulanization, what are they doing in people's forests? Ancient forests. What are they doing there with AK-47, with rocket launchers? What on earth are they doing there if there is no agenda? So, I mean, you have to, even a school child knows these things. Then there is an agenda. What are you doing in people's forests with AK-47 and you don't even have cows? What are you doing there? Killing women, raping children, I mean, raping women, killing children, beheading people. What on earth is that? But well, Mr. Melafia, in a country, Mr. Melafia, in a country as as diverse as Nigeria, with you know people from other tribes even seeming to have cessationist movement. There's the Igbo, there's the IPOB, there's the you know Oduwa nation that, that that seems to want to come up. Do you think there's a likelihood? that that fulanization agenda would be achieved in this country. Lots of people argue otherwise, don't you think? Well, that's another dimension. You know, people have asked me that question. And my brothers from the far north have asked me, ah, why is it that it is only when we have a Muslim northerner in the person of Buhari that people are agita agitating for um, you know, separation for secession. And my answer is very, very straightforward. We have a bad constitution. We have an illegitimate constitution. But even with a bad constitution, people are prepared to live with so long as there is fairness and justice. You will agree with me that Olusha Gun Obasanjo, despite his weaknesses, he was a patriot and a fair man. You will agree with me that Umaru Yeradua of blessed memory, despite his weaknesses and illness took a toll on him and we lost him, he was a good man and he meant well for the country. The same can be so said for good luck Ebele Jonathan. But when you have somebody who came with a clear agenda to conquer and humiliate Nigerians, this is really what you get. And people, look, people have a right. Those who are about to die have a right to defend themselves, to defend their families, to defend their communities. 
international law gives them that right. Global ethics gives them that right. Uh, natural justice and equity give them that right. Our constitution, our legal status confer on them those rights, including, of course, you cannot say they should not demand uh, self-determination if they have to live with such diabolical wickedness as we are seeing today. All right, I, I, I want right to... to yeah, Mr. Melafia, I want to go, um, you know, be, you know, as maybe like a follow-up to one of the things that I asked earlier. Um, we have elections, so, you know, the current administration will be ending in 2023. Um, what would you say Nigeria needs to do to heal um, beyond this current administration? And, of course, to maybe save Nigeria from, you know, the impending doom that it might be looking at. Okay, we lost him. I think uh, we're going to have to reconnect with uh, uh, Mr. Obadiah May Lafia. See, Osarie, um, in this topic that we've been debating for years about sponsors of terrorism, I remember in 2020, just in November, the United Arab Emirates convicted six Nigerians for allegedly sponsoring Boko Haram. I mentioned that earlier. Two of yeah. them were sentenced to death. Four of them were sentenced to 10 year life imprisonment. This is the United Arab Emirates quoting from their constitution that forbids sponsoring terrorism or terrorism financing. But here in Nigeria, the country in question, country of interest, so to speak, we keep taking a trumpet year in, year out and blowing it, telling the world that we know who are sponsoring ter terrorism but we're taking no action regarding the arrest. We're taking no action regarding the prosecution, while other countries seem to do our jobs for us. Yeah. And they even name people. They named one Alaji Ashiru, who is said to be a government official. Yeah. Why, or Alaji Seydou. Why has the government not gone ahead to investigate this and find out who this man is? Because when you get one, that's, that's basically wow. jackpot for you to get names of the rest of the gang. Well, like uh, Mr. Melafia said, you know, it's very possible that the government does know, um, but is, you know, dragging its feet with regards, you know, naming and shaming those and prosecuting those people. For what? But at the same time, well, you know, that's, that's where the challenge really is, knowing the why. You know, and, and you know, he, um, Obadiah Melafia had mentioned, uh, reached back to uh, former President Lushu Gombasanjo's narrative of fulanization. And that's why I was asking, you know, if that is true, then what next after the current administration? Um, it's not difficult to make political statements. It's not difficult to make um, um, proclamations. But we see other TV. countries actually taking the yeah. action. So, so that's why I'm saying it's not difficult to say those things. It's not difficult for a, a, um, you know, a press secretary or um, a, um, you know, SSA to a governor or to a president or you know, whoever to make such statements and say we know and we're going to be dealing with them. Just hold on. We're going to be, those things are easy to say. Um, but... When it goes on for five, six years and you still don't name anybody or shame on or prosecute anybody, then, you know, it, it then almost seems like you are intentionally withholding the identities of those people. Um, all the questions that I feel that we need to ask are, is it really, really, really possible that we've not been able to track the financing? We've not been able to um, carry out proper investigation intelligence gathering, undercover that. reporting, um, undercover um, agents being placed in some of these things to know the persons who are in charge I of these uh, you know, uh, groups and who is you know, really behind these terrorist groups. Is it really, really possible? Um, I remember also someone had mentioned, I'm not, I think it was Sunny Abacha who had mentioned that if uh, the terrorism lasts for a couple of, couple of days or 24, 48 the hours, then the government is, has a hand in it. Um, Mr. Obadiah, welcome back, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, sorry for the technical issues. I don't yeah, know what happened. We understand look, that. I, I, some of us are not speaking. I know I've been in politics, okay? And I've been a presidential candidate. I came forth in the last presidential elections. But I'm not speaking on these issues like a politician. Believe you me, I am not. I am speaking as, uh, uh, as a citizen. Uh, I am speaking as somebody who fears the Lord greatly. Uh, I'm speaking as a humanist, and I'm speaking as a public intellectual. 
if anybody has any iota of moral conscience, you will not tolerate this evil that is going on. Let's just call evil by its name. Well, and we shouldn't deceive ourselves. If the killing stopped today, you probably wouldn't even hear the name of Obadiah Midafia anymore. I don't even, I'm, I don't like Wahala, I don't like trouble. But what is pushing me is this evil that does not allow me to sleep. I can't stand the killing of innocent people. I abhor it, I hate it. All right. One, that is what is pushing me. Right. Yeah, I totally understand that. And one thing I was asking um, earlier was, um, we have, you know, about two years to the next general elections. Um, if yes. the current administration and those who are currently in positions of power are no longer here, are no longer in those positions after 2023, what do you think Nigeria must do, or whoever it is that takes over must do, to reverse some of the ills that you've mentioned and you've pointed out in this conversation? Look, the, the first duty of leadership is to bring our people back together. We have some divisions inherently in the nature of the Nigerian society. We're a multi-ethnic, multi-religious society. And some of these irresponsible leaders have actually taken advantage of those fissures to deepen those fissures and to alienate our people from each other and to create massive distrust. This is what is leading to agitation for Oduduwa Republic, for Biafra, and even for Middle Belt Kingdom. You know, these demands are there. Uh, the first duty of government is to bring our people back together and build a moral consensus on the war, on the way forward for Nigeria as a free and democratic country. Number two, without fear of favor, to dig out the people behind this evil and to put them to shame, and to make them pay for their wicked crimes. How much price can you put on the life of a child? He's in school, and you go and you abduct him. You force them into marriage. You rape them. What do you think you are doing to the future and the destiny of that child, and in fact, the destiny of our country? So find out those people. I don't believe in this amnesty nonsense. It is. It's like giving amnesty to Adolf Hitler. I mean, what does that mean? In, in, fact, in fact, it means you and the terrorists are the same. You don't, you don't uh, give amnesty to moral evil. And I, I, there is no moral equivalence with Niger Delta. Those Niger Delta people were not killing people. They will be, in fact, they prefer to abduct even white people in the oil sector. I'm not saying abducting oil, uh, white people is a good thing, but they did it to, for symbolic purpose. These people that are doing now, they are killers, they are rapists, and they've killed thousands of people. Find all of them, let there be a truth commission, find all of them, those who are guilty must be made to face the full consequences of the law, so that it is registered in history that evil does not pay. For okay. now, Evil pays, it appears to be very, very highly paying in Nigeria All with right. the kind of ransoms they are being given. Mr. So, then thirdly, Mr. of course, Malafia. we need a program of disarmament. We have to disarm these bandits and terrorists and build a framework. But don't get me wrong. I am not those who believe that the whole of the North is somehow in complot with this. The North has suffered terribly. We need a massive program of rehabilitation and reconstruction in the North. Massive resources must be poured in, in education, in health services, in infrastructures, in creating jobs, so that the conditions that gave birth to these problems would have been taken care of. Indeed. Mr. Milafia, I, I, I needed to ask country. you about this. I, I was speaking when we lost you there for a minute that in the United Arab Emirates, you know, in 2020, they arrested six people, you know, who were alleged sponsors of terrorism. They sentenced two to death and uh, four others to life imprisonment. And I mentioned, you know, that in Nigeria here, what we just see is the government make statements, but countries like the UAE take action. So what can the federal government learn from the UAE? And also, would you recommend intergovernmental you know, collaboration 
to nip this in the bud? And also, how can we begin to fight money laundering? Because obviously, this is one of the ways you know that money comes in illegally into the country to, to finance terrorism. Well, um, you, you've asked many questions. Why can't we learn from the UAE? Well, they have leadership there. They have a government that responds to the needs of the people. Uh, by the way, they are not a democracy. They are, they are a monarchy, you know. Uh, they are a constitutional monarchy. Uh, it's, a, it's a group of countries that have come together as a, as a kind of federation. Uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, Dubai, Sarja, and, and the rest of them. Uh, they've come together, uh, and they are running their country very well. They are one of the most prosperous uh, economies uh, on this planet. And they don't joke. In fact, even to give a bounce check is a serious offense worthy of imprisonment in, in, in the UAE. You don't even try it. So they are extremely strict. Uh, and we need to learn from them. Here in Nigeria, it looks as if if he's a murderer, he's a killer, he's from my hometown, it's okay. You can spare him. But you don't know what you are doing to the moral fabric of society. By tolerating evil and crime, you are actually undermining the moral health and the moral sanity of the society as a whole. And um, the other issues, you know, tell, boil down to, you know, leadership. Uh, money laundering is still a very big problem in this country. Unfortunately, they are going for the wrong people. Uh, they are going for little traders, you know, the Igbo traders try to carry their money to China to go and buy goods. They're the people you are handling, uh, you, are, you, are, you, you, know, you, are, you are focusing on. Instead of focusing on the people who are killing uh, people in their thousands and you know, bringing havoc and destruction to our country, these are the people you should focus on. And okay. you, you should follow the money, you should follow all the routes and channels by which uh, they do these things, and then you impose a head punishment. Have All you right. ever heard of anyone being imprisoned for kidnapping or even being executed for terrorism in Nigeria? And, and uh, you know, an international organization has determined that the Fulani headsmen are the fourth most destructive terrorist organization in the world. Uh, they can come openly, Fulham and Mieti Alda can come openly and confess that, yes, we did that killing. Nothing will ever happen to them. Nobody will arrest them for talking. But when in Obadiah Milafia uh, is crying that people are being killed, they go for him. What kind right. of um, sad, sad um, Milafia, uh, it's always, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for uh your uh, time this morning and of course for the work that you do to um you bring a better nigeria uh looking forward to another conversation with you and uh, we wish you well entirely yes thanks again and, and both of you to have a great future please keep on that that work thank you very much thanks all right thank all right. you stay with us um we're yeah. going on a short break still talking security next and that is now set an agenda for the new acting inspector general of police he of course uh, is uh, coming into a space where there's a plethora of security challenges uh, nigeria is currently facing and so what are uh, the expectations that have been set for the new idea of police usman baba that comes up next <laughs>